Hello and welcome back to SAS Bootcamp week 5 video 4 where we are going to learn about how to merge or join data sets using PRAC SQL. Um, merging data sets in SQL is another really nifty useful little thing that I actually do all of the time. So when I need to merge data sets I actually prefer using PRAC SQL over regular data steps and I will use it as much as possible and we'll talk about why. First thing I want to talk about with joining data sets is we'll talk about how vertically joining a data set, which is called stacking. If you remember in a data set, if you want to stack data sets, you simply list the data sets you want in the set statement. In the set statement, you can list as many data sets as you want, and, and um, SAS will just stack them on top of each other, right? Uh, in a PROC SQL statement, you can accomplish this by writing your uh, PROC SQL commands twice or for or as many times as you want data sets and then separating them with the command outer union corresponding i understand that's not very intuitive and that's just how proc sql works but uh, outer union corresponding if you want to uh, associate some logic to why that works uh, for those of you that may have had set theory uh, talking about sets and the inner and the outer unions of sets that's basically what this is it's finding the outer union of two sets but they are corresponding to the variables they are so so the union is formed corresponding to the variables listed so they are list stacked on top of each other as opposed to a horizontal merge uh, for doing vertical merges really data steps are easier than proc sqls i will only use proc sqls when i want to do a vertical merge while also performing several commands within the proc sql so for example if i want to create new variables if i want to use a where command and if I want to do an order by or something else like that, or a group by within each of these data sets that I'm stacking, then I might use PROC SQL to do it. Otherwise, it's much easier to do within, um, within a data set. So let's switch gears, talk about horizontal merging or merging as we usually refer to it um, within PROC SQL. PROC SQL can handle merging of all types that we've discussed in data steps, and it can do them faster and better. Uh, the differences between using merges with PROC SQL versus data step is the first thing is that in a data step, you need to first sort your data sets before you can do the merge. In a PROC SQL, you don't have to sort the data sets. The sorting is automatically done within the data, within the PROC SQL and that PROC sort step can be completely skipped. Second, if you are merging data sets in a data step, the key variable that you are merging on has to be named the same variable in both merging data sets, within, if you're using a data step to do this, right? With a data and a merge statement, you are only allowed to have the key variable be the same name in both the data sets. Whereas in PROC SQL, the key variables can have different names. So for example, I may, be, I may want to merge a data set that provides the median income in each county in one data set with the names of the county and the county, uh, the county FIPS ID in a different data set, but maybe the ID variable, the key variable in both data sets have different names. Well, you could always rename the variable before you do the merge, but if you don't want to rename it, use PROC SQL to do your merge, and then you don't have to worry about it. So let's talk about how to merge data sets in PROC SQL. And I'll begin with the default merge before we talk about, before we talk about different types of one is to one or one is to many merges within PROC SQL. Okay, so here is the structure of a basic merge within PROC SQL. Here we have a create table state command, just like we usually do. We have the select command, uh, which I'm going to skip for now, just as I usually do when explaining this. In my from command, instead of just listing one data set, I actually have two data sets listed. I've got my first data set here, class.benny benny underscore visit. I've got a comma, I'll come back to the as a in a second. And then I've got a second data set class underscore Benny and Benny class dot Benny underscore DOB. You'll recognize this is the same format for mentioning a data set, right? Library name, period, and then data set name. Um, and then for both data sets, I've got an as A and as B listed. This as A, when this uh, format is used in the way, in the from statement is basically a shorthand for referring to that data set. So if I want to refer to the data of Benny DOB data set, I can refer to it as class dot Benny underscore DOB, or if it is easier to type it, I can just call it B. 
now that I've used the as B option. And this comes really handy because in my where statement, the where statement in the in the merging option within Graph SQL is where you tell SAS what variable you want to merge them on. And here I want to merge them on the Benny ID variable. So I want to say that use the Benny ID variable in the A data set, which A data set is class dot Benny underscore visit, and B data set is Benny underscore DOB, so equals B dot Benny ID. So if I don't want to use A, I could type this, right? Class dot Benny visit dot Benny ID. And instead of B, I can type that class dot Benny underscore DOB dot Benny ID. But that's just a lot of things to type, right? And if we don't want to do that much, I can just say B dot Benny ID and A dot Benny ID. So it's basically saying use the variable Benny ID from the A data set and match that to the variable Benny ID from the B data set in order to do the merge. So when you come to the select statement, the select statement basically does what usually select does, right? We just list the variables we are interested in seeing in your final output data set. Here, when you do this, you have to be careful because you have to distinguish from variables that are only in one data set versus variables that are in both data sets. So for example, the Benny ID variable, which is the key variable here, is actually both in data set A and data set B. So if I say select Benny ID, SAS is going to be confused. SAS is going to say, which Benny ID do you want me to use? Do you want me to use the Benny ID from the first data set or the second data set? It does not matter that they actually have the same value because that's what the merge is being done on. But SAS will still get confused and SAS will not know which variable to pull it from, which data set to pull that variable from. So you have to be explicit. So you have to say, use the Benny ID from the first data set, from the A data set here. Follow that up with the visit variable. Now the visit variable is only in this data set. It's not in the other data set. So if I had not listed a dot, if I had just listed comma visit, that would have worked because SAS understands it's only in one data set, there's no confusion. But I like being explicit with my code. And I think it's helpful to explicitly mention for whoever is reading your code or proofreading it, where that variable is coming from. So I'm going to say a dot visit to be explicit that this variable is coming from a Benny underscore visit data set. And then my DOB data variable is coming from a Benny underscore DOB data set. So I listed B dot in front of it. Again, I didn't need to because DOB is only in one data set and there's no confusion, but I'm listing it to be explicit. And finally, I have listed B dot Benny ID, which is the Benny ID, the key variable in the B data set. It's really not necessary to mention this here because it's already the, the, the matched Benny ID in the first data set is already in my select statement, right? But I want to include it here anyway, just so that I can look at it and I can see if the match worked correctly. Let me, let me just say that, right? Uh, and if I want to have that variable in there, I can't have two variables with the same name, so I have to rename it the second time. So I've used the as function here, and then I've renamed it as dob underscore Benny ID to say this is the Benny ID in the dob data set. Excuse me. Okay, now if I hit run, my log basically tells me that uh, my final data set has 18 rows. Uh, PROC SQL's merge does not actually tell me how many rows were in each of the input data sets, but you can see that the output data set has 18 rows. Uh, and here it is now. So we've got both the visit variable and the date of birth variable, both included in one data set, along with my DOB underscore Benny ID variable, which is just the Benny ID from the second data set the data set which had the DOB variable in it, that's that Benny ID. And you can see that they are perfectly matched, right? Um, so so um, this ran without any errors. Now, if you, if you will see that if I skip the A dot in this, excuse me, if I skip the A dot for the Benny ID, let's see what happens. See, so the log threw me an error and SAS did not execute this proc SQL. It said, ambiguous reference column Benny ID is in more than one table. So when you have a variable uh, that is present in more than one table out of a prox SQL merge command, then you have to be explicit about which data set you want that variable to come from. And if you want both variables, if you want the variables from both data sets to be included, you have to make sure that you rename the second variable from the other data set because you can't have two variables with the same name in any data set. 
Okay, so, so this is good. This is the basic merge that you can do within PROC SQL. It's a little complex, but it gets the task accomplished. The one thing to remember when doing this though, is that this is an inner merge. So if you will recollect our discussion from um, last week, I think, uh, here, let me switch to a whiteboard so I can demonstrate this one more time. If you will recollect our discussion from last week, merges, there are many types of merging two data sets, right? So if this is data set A, this is data set B, an inner merge is basically only those rows which are present in both data sets. So this is an inner merge. Wherever there is an overlap, only that is outputted into the final data set. That's called an inner merge. If you want to do a left merge, you would include this shaded region along with this shaded region. So the data set that's on the left will also be included al uh, along with the inner overlap region. That's called a left merge. If you want a right merge, you'll basically only include the variables that are in the right side they, they, that are only in the data set that's on the right side. So that will include all of this material right here and the inner shaded region. That's a right merge. Or finally, you can have an outer merge, which includes basically any rows of data that may be present in this call, in this region, in this region, or in this region. Right. So we talked about these different types of merges when we discussed this last week. Uh, let me try and switch back to SAS uh, Studio here. Why is my option not showing up? Um, okay, here we go. So, so when you do the basic default merge using SAP PROC SQL, where you say where A dot Benny ID equals B dot Benny ID, that's the inner merge. So you can use this, but be very careful this will throw out any rows of data that are not present in both data sets. Both data sets have to have this individual in order for it to be present in the full underscore DOB underscore visit data set. But you can change that. There are other ways to do this. If you want to be more explicit with the type of merges you are doing, do not use the where operator to do your merging. Instead, use the on operator. Now this gets a little tricky because the on operator is not in the mnemonic that we learned, right? So when we learned a mnemonic, so few workers go home on time, on was not a command. We have select from where group by having an order by, where is what we used to do the previous merge, but there was no on. That is because, um, okay, that is because in my new syntax for merging two data sets, in my from statement, after listing my first data set, Benny underscore visit as A, instead of just using a comma, which is what we did over here, I now have an explicit command join. When you explicitly say join, then you get to activate this other command within Proc SQL, which is the on command. So when you use join, you get to use the on command, which then specifies the key variable in both data sets. And the way the key variable is listed is actually exactly the same as the where statement, but it is now listed within the on statement because you have the join. If you use the join command and you skip the on statement, SAS will throw you an error. If you use the join command and you write where, like we did earlier here, SAS will throw you an error. So when you have the join statement, you have to have the on statement. And everything else in this piece of code is exactly the same as the previous one, right? Uh, we've replaced the comma with the join. We've replaced the where with an on, but the create table, the select command, and the from command, everything else is the same. You've got your variable, you've got your data sets listed along with a shortcut reference for that data set as A or as B. Um, and this will actually create the exact same output as the previous one too. So in the previous one, if you remember, there were 18 rows. We still have 18 rows right now. This is an inner merge. So when you use the join command, you still get an inner merge, but there is a way to make that, to change that. Once you've learned to use the join command, you can replace it with full space join, and that will give you the outer merge. You can replace with inner space join, which will give you the inner merge. You can use the word left space join, which will give you the left merge, and then you can use right space join, which will give you the right merge. Let's uh, run a couple of these and see what it looks like. So first I want to run the full join. Remember we are joining the Benny visit data set with the Benny underscore DOB data set. 
log looks okay. This time there are 23 rows in my data set. And if you check the output data, you will see that visit was missing for the second beneficiary, but the second beneficiary actually did have a date of birth. And you can see this Denny ID variable, which is sourced from the second data set, the DOB data set, actually does not have missing value here. But here, there is a missing value because Benny ID from the visit data set was actually missing. There was no Benny ID too. Um, so when we did the full join, we've got individuals that are present in either data set, either in the A data set or the B data set, either in the left data set or the right data set. So this one is here. Similarly, you'll see Benny ID 6 is in the left data set, but not in the right data set. So the two variables here that come from the right data set are missing for Benny ID 6. But the two variables that are on the left, they are not missing, they are actually here. So there's your left join. Uh, this is the inner join, which we just ran. So there are three different ways to do inner join in Proc SQL. You can do an inner join by simply writing the join command with an on feature for, for explaining what the key variable is. You can be more explicit and you can say inner join instead of just join, or you can skip both inner join and simply write a comma, follow that up with a where statement instead of on, and that will also give you a uh, that will also give you an inner join. So there are three different ways to do inner join. If you want to do a left join, you simply write left join followed by an on statement. Remember, everything else stays the same. You still have the create table, select from, uh, and really, if you wanted to add more things here, if you wanted to add a where statement, if you wanted to add a group by statement, you can do all of those things. But as a rule of thumb, when I'm doing merge, I try not to do those other functions just because um, the way those are executed within SAS gets really confusing really quickly. And I would rather keep those procedures separate, even though there is an option to group them all and do them all together. Because what happens when you group them all is the syntax won't identify any errors. SAS log will tell you it worked just fine. And then you open your data set and you don't know if it did the filtering in the where statement first, or if it did the merging first, or, or just all sorts of combinations and problems happen. So when I do use uh, both the merge and the group by or a where statement, I make sure and I double check or triple check that the code is working very well. Here's my left join. In the left join, all variables on the left data set, which are my visit data set, are present here, so including Benny 6. But the individuals that are not in the left data set but were present in this right data set, that was Benny ID 2, is actually not in this output data set. Right? So this is a left join. Next, we have a right join. Code worked OK. Um, in the right join, we only have all of the individuals that were in the right data set and individuals that were not in the right data set are not in my final output. So you'll see here that Benny ID 2, which was actually in the right data set, but not in the left data set. There is actually a row for this individual, but the first two columns are missing because there was no Benny ID 2 in the left data set, right? So the row is still here, 10th April 1990 is here, but Benny ID is not in the Benny ID column. If I had requested Benny ID here, um, so for example, if I had said here B dot Benny ID as DOB underscore Benny ID, which is the Benny ID variable source from the right data set, you would actually be able to look at it. There you go. So Benny ID from the right data set is there right here, but in the left data set, that variable is missing, that value is missing. Similarly, Benny ID 6, which was in the left data set, but not in the right data set, actually is not even included in this output because this is a right merge, which means only those rows which are in the right data set are included in the output data. Uh, as we discussed last week, there are many ways to do these merges, left join, right join, inner join, outer join, and often you can get at what you want through some combination through, through several approaches, right? You can either use an inner join sometimes, or you can use a left join or a right join. But I would suggest that you decide right now which type of a join is more intuitive to you, is more easy to understand, and that you continue to use that join command every single time you need to use a join. This makes sure that your mind has the one set way of thinking about these merges, um, and it 
makes it easier for you to catch errors when you're looking when you're looking through your code. Uh, for me, that is left join. So every time I want to do any type of uh, joins, I will always use left join, and then I will filter my data set after that. So I'll use a left join, and if it is actually a right join I wanted, I just list my right data set on the left, and then it becomes a left join. And then if I need to get an inner join and not a left join, I'll then use a where command, or I'll simply write a data step afterwards to filter out the rows that I don't want. So there are ways to get to your inner join while still doing a left join, which is what I usually prefer to do, just because it standardizes the process, the thought process in my own mind, helps me catch errors easier. That is it for this video. In the next video, we are going to talk about even more things with Proxy.